guys, I'm John, the founder of RC Juice. Thanks for taking the time to check out another video from our workbench today. Today we're going to talk about a topic that after a lot of years of being in this business, we can say is by far, hands down, the number one most misunderstood topic of our hobby. Um, and this has to do with voltage and KVs of motors and ESCs and what you can safely run. Um, so, in general, I'm sure most of you guys are aware, whenever you look at a motor or, or an ESC on a website, you've got the spec chart for it. Within those specs, there's always something that will tell you what the maximum voltage or LiPo cells that you can run with a motor or an ESC is. So, with ESCs, it's more simple. On an ESC, there is a hard voltage limitation. If an ESC says you can only run up to six cell on it, then you can only run six cell. That has to do not only with the um, physical limitations of the components inside of the ESC, but most importantly, the actual firmware that's installed in the ESC. The ESC has to be able to recognize however many volts you are plugging into that speed control so it knows, for instance, when to cut off power for your low voltage cutoff on your, on your LiPo batteries. So on an ESC, yes, it's, it's a hard limitation. If it says four cell, you can only run four cell. Depending on the ESC, it's very possible to, if you run more voltage than the, that ESC can handle, it can actually pop immediately. You can turn it on, the ESC will be toast. Again, that's not with all ESCs, but the important thing to remember is ESC voltage limitations are hard and fast. You cannot exceed that limitation. It's still possible to overheat and damage an ESC even when you're running within that voltage. We'll talk more about that later, but again, ESCs follow that voltage recommendation. Now when it comes to motors, motors is where there's a bit more of a gray area. And again, on most motors, you will still always see a voltage limitation somewhere in that spec chart or, or spec list for that motor. Um, the first thing to understand is that on motors, a voltage limitation is not a hard limitation like it is on an ESC. The best way to put it is the voltage limitation shown for a motor as basically a general guideline that says you can run probably this many volts and this motor is going to survive. There's basically two things that will destroy a motor. The first is RPM and the second is heat. As far as RPM, that's a lot easier to calculate and know if you're in a safe range. On a motor, if you simply take the KV of the motor, for instance, this is a 4300 KV Hobbystar Pro 4 motor, and you multiply that by the voltage that you're running. So this in general is a two cell motor. So a 4300 KV motor running 7.4 volts is gonna spin 31,820 RPM. This motor is rated to 50,000 RPM, so RPM wise, running two cell on this motor, we'd still be fine. Uh, we should also keep in mind that a fully charged LiPo pack will have a little bit more voltage, so at first you will get some more RPM out of it, so keep that in mind. Um, that max RPM is also the max RPM potential of a motor. It won't necessarily achieve that RPM under load, but in a perfect world, you can think that this motor is going to spin at the KV multiplied by the voltage. So as long as you're not over revving the motor, as far as RPMs, you're okay. So the big, big, big topic here is heat. And again, this is the most misunderstood thing pretty much in our entire hobby is how voltage limitations and heat relate to motors. On a motor, it's, very important to realize that unlike an ESC, there is no hard limitation or anything that actually limits how much voltage you can run to a motor. Again, this is a two cell rated motor. If I wanted to hook this motor up to this big old fifth scale ESC, I want to run 12 cell to it. This motor is going to run fine for a little bit. Um, of course, if you revved it to the full RPM, there's a very good chance you're going to explode that motor inside here. This motor on six cell would be running 95,460 RPM, so obviously the RPMs would be an issue. We're talking 12 cell on a two cell motor here, just to illustrate the example that the motor would work fine on it. If you managed your throttle for a while and kept that motor under 50,000 RPM, it would work, but eventually this motor is going to overheat and fail. Again, there are some other things like physical damage or dirt entering a motor that can damage a motor, but at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, the only thing that damages a motor is heat. It's very important to remember. 
The worst thing you can do to a motor is overheat it. Once you overheat that motor, then the motor can fail. If you overheat a motor bad enough, it can actually cause a short and it can actually take out the ESC. If the ESC shorts out bad enough, it'll take out the batteries with it. We've seen it happen, it can happen. Um, to this point, it's also important to understand uh, in your brushless system, your motor pulls all the current it wants. So a common question that we get is what size ESC a person should run and not for that safety factor, um, but for power. People will say, well, I can run an 80 amp ESC or I can run a 120 amp ESC for more power because that ESC is going to send more power to the motor, you know, 80 amp versus 120 amp, I want the more powerful ESC. Um, in our systems, that's not how it works. A motor pulls all the current it wants. If you put a ton of motor, or uh, excuse me, a ton of load on a small motor, that motor will pull a lot more current than it's rated for, and it will gladly pull a lot more current through your ESC than that ESC is rated for. So it's important that when you're setting up your system, you set it up with an ESC that has enough capacity to keep up with the demands of your motor. But again, this motor will pull whatever it wants. So it's really important to realize that, that also nothing stops this motor from pulling more power. It's gonna pull more power until it overheats or it explodes from too much RPM. But again, nothing is going to limit what you can actually run to this motor. For example, we've got, I don't know if you guys see back here, this is our shop tracks is UDR. Um, inside this right now, so stock, this truck comes set up for four cell or six cell is kind of what they set it up for. We have a different ESC in here and we're actually running an eight cell setup in this truck. This truck has a Hobbystar 4092 motor and 1730 kV. Uh, that motor is not rated to eight cell. We have been running this truck on eight cell for about a year now. We take a lot of care to monitor motor temps on it. We took some time to set up the gearing. And again, in a year of running that truck, we have never damaged the motor. We've never damaged the ESC. We've broken plenty of driveline components, um, but that motor is fine. It's not eight cell rated. We run it on eight cell. We just really take our time to monitor those temps. So monitoring those temps on your motor is absolutely critical. Whenever you have any new setup, it's really, really, really important that you monitor temps. The best way to do that is with a temp gun. These guys are pretty cheap. Uh, this is one of the little Hobby Star temperature guns that, that we sell. It's an infrared temperature gun. You just simply press the button, you hold it near the motor. It's best to kind of put it towards the middle of the can and it'll tell you the temperature on the motor. Uh, as a general rule, you want to keep your motor under 170 degrees Fahrenheit is, is what we're shooting for. If you don't have a temp gun, kind of a quick and dirty way of doing it, be careful when you're doing this, is to just take your finger and put your finger on the motor. If you can't keep your finger on your motor for more than one or two seconds, the motor's too hot. You definitely want to keep this thing so you could put your fingers on it um, for a few seconds. It probably will get uncomfortable after a bit, but again, if you touch your motor and you're burning your finger right away, your motor is way too hot. Once it gets to that point, you'll usually smell it as well. Um, so what really changes that load on that motor, if you're not changing anything else as far as voltage or car setup or anything, it's, it, it's the gearing on this motor. So if you think about driving like a stick shift car or a 10 speed bicycle, think about being at a complete stop. In your car, put that car into fifth gear or on your bicycle, ship, shift up into the highest gear you have, then try to take off from a stop. You can do it, but it's gonna take off slow and the engine be it in your car, the actual engine, or yourself on your bicycle, is it's really, really overloaded. You're gonna get hot and sweaty. If you're on a bicycle, a car, it can overheat the motor. You can start to slip your clutch. You can overload an automatic transmission. And the number one thing that's gonna happen from all that is it's gonna build up a lot of heat. At the end of the day, we're still bound by the laws of physics. Whenever you're putting a lot of load on something, that load has to show up somehow. If you're not moving forward right away, you're building heat. That's where all that energy going, is going, is going into heat. That heat builds up inside the motor to the point where the motor will overheat. So it's really important to understand that, say this two cell motor, we have it in a truck that it's meant for, say we put this in a short course in a four by four slash on two cell. That's what this motor is made for. You can put a pinion gear on this motor the size of a pizza, and even though you're running two cell, you're gonna quickly overheat this motor and it's gonna get destroyed. So 
We get a lot of emails from customers with a motor. They'll say, I put this motor in my car. It says it's you know, four cell rated. The car overheated, motor burned down, the motor's defective. What's wrong with the motor? So, so how that all factors into RC is by the gearing on your motor. So the first thing that you need to do when setting up a system is to generally make sure that you are running within the voltage limitations of both your motor and the ESC that you're running. But the other thing that you really need to keep in mind is the gearing on your motor and your overall gearing. And what we mean by overall gearing is it's not just your pinion and spur, but you also have to keep in mind any other thing within your vehicle that will affect the overall gear ratio, putting the power down to the ground. By that, we mean your differential gears uh, and your, your tire and wheel size. All those things will have an effect on how much load is put on your motor. So even if you've got a car that's been running fine for a while, then you go and throw a big set of wheels and tires on it, it's very possible that even though things have been running fine, you put those bigger wheels and tires on it, you've now increased that load on this motor and the motor can then overheat. So in the majority of cases, when a motor overheats, the motor overheats because we let it overheat, because we didn't pay attention to the temperatures, we didn't adjust the gearing, we let the temperature get out of hand on the motor, and eventually that motor is gonna fail due to that overheating. So when you're running a pretty conservative setup, when you're not running a lot of gearing or you're running well under the maximum rated voltage for a motor, you can be a lot more careless with operating temperatures. In general, the thing's gonna stay in check. But once we start getting up towards the high end limits of a motor for the voltage limitations on it, that's when it becomes really, really critical to monitor those temps. So for guys that are trying to get the most power or the most speed out of a car, again, we get these emails all the time. People are always saying, what's, what's the maximum voltage I can run on this motor? How much voltage can I run? What's, what's the fastest motor you have? We get that all the time. So if you're running a motor rated for six cell, right up at six cell, it's really important that you are already up to that top limitation of that motor. So it becomes incumbent on you to really take the time to monitor temperatures and make sure that that motor is set up right. The closer you get to the limitations of a motor, the more important this stuff becomes. So whenever you have a new setup, what we always recommend, whenever I'm driving a car to this day, after years and years and years of this hobby, I've always got a temp gun in my pocket. So when you're starting out, set your car up, put it on the ground, it's best to do it with the body off at first so we can have access to the motor very easily. Start driving the car around, drive around for a minute or two, check the temps on the motor. If things are feeling good, then drive it for another couple of minutes, start driving it a little bit harder and you kind of slowly work your way up to a normal driving pace on that car, making sure that you monitor those temperatures. If the motor is getting hot, it's really important that you stop, change something on the motor or on, on your setup, which is usually gonna be just your gearing, usually swap out a pinion gear and then drive again. Um, so it's also important to know you can be driving your car around and everything's fine. You're driving around kind of lightly. Once you start really kind of thrashing on that car, pushing it a little bit harder, if you are a little bit tall on your gearing, that motor temperature will spike pretty quick. So if you drive it, you know, for a minute or two and everything seems fine and then you just let that car go and just hammer on the throttle, it is possible that you'll still cook that motor. Um, you'll also, when you're driving it around testing it, your general will will tend to drive the car a lot more easily because we're testing it out, we're being more conservative, we're making sure it's not getting too hot. So even after that little setup session, the tendency is to drive the car a lot harder. Once you actually put it on the ground, put it on the dirt, take it out for a run, drive it for full battery pack, you can still build up a lot more heat than you would have built up in kind of a more monitor test section, or test session, excuse me. So very important to still kind of periodically monitor those temps on your setup. When it's new, at first, you wanna do it all the time. It's still not a bad idea, again. I still, to this day, always have a temp gun in my pocket, um, especially now, uh, right now, for instance, this time of year, we got summer coming. If you're used to running in the winter time, that really helps a lot. Um, your motor is transferring a lot of that heat that's building up right into the cold air. That cold air will help pull that heat right out of the motor. It starts getting hotter out, that heat doesn't leave the motor quite as quickly, that heat stays built up in the motor. So you wanna take into account things like the environment that you're running in that will change how much heat is built up in your motor. Um, so guys, to kind of summarize, again, in a brushless power system, or in, in any power system for that matter, it doesn't have to be brushless, we just deal with mostly brushless, 
the motor pulls as much current as it wants through your system. It's important that we dial in the gearing on that motor to keep the motor temps in check. If your motor temps are in check, then most likely your overall current flow to that motor is fine. As long as your ESC is specced for the motor and the current demands of this motor, then your system is going to do okay. If you get things too hot, that's when we start seeing parts fail. Again, 99% of the time, honestly, heat is what kills a motor if a motor fails. So we, we will see sometimes a problem with, say, for instance, a sensor board. A sensor board is probably the number one thing that we see fail on a motor that's not directly related to RPM or heat. But again, most of the time it's heat, guys. So if you understand this concept, if you really take the time to monitor your temperatures on any new setup and still periodically throughout when you have that setup, that system is gonna last you indefinitely. Other than bearings inside these motors, which if you keep them clean can also kind of last indefinitely, there's not much to fail on a brushless motor. If you keep those temps in check, I've got cars at home that I've had 10, 15 years on, on the same motor, the same ESC. They've been through all kinds of abusive driving and the electronics still work fine because those temps stayed in check. You start heating things up, you're going to kill them or severely shorten the life of those components. Guys, hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email. We'll have a link down in the description. As always, guys, thank you for watching.